Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you a game from Vikenze in 2003 between Vasily Avanchuk with the white pieces and Ruslan Ponomaryov with the black pieces. Game started off D4, D5, C4, Queen's Gambit, and Queen's Gambit accepted a rare guest at the highest levels nowadays. Knight of 3, Knight of 6, E3, E6, and now Bishop take C4. C5, immediately countering the center. Queen E2, A6, D takes C5. D takes C5. Now, just for you newbies right there, you might wonder, well, why is uh, white helping black develop by just capturing, of course, the move knight C3 can be played here, or castle. Um, one is uh, white is uh, avoiding the isolated pawn here, and and he's going to get the uh, Tempe back at some point by attacking the bishop. So even though right now, yes, it seems that he's giving black some time, he actually winds up getting the time back because the bishop is uh, sort of exposed on c5. So the game continued. Castle b5, bishop d3. The knight came out to c6. And right here is where I wanted to start today's uh, discussion. All right, so why did I choose this game um, and this particular position? The reason why I chose this particular um, game, it's a nice game, a short game, and also uh, because of the symmetry in the position. Uh, there's an old book, uh, actually it's a two-part uh, book called The Middle Game by Max Erver, and I believe it was written in the 50s. I have... Um, uh, copies of it in my basement and uh, it's a fantastic book uh, for me anyway because of the clarity and the uh, exp in the explanation of the ideas and one thing that uh, I always remember that he said uh, about symmetrical positions was that usually the player that has can have the initiative is going to end up better these positions if you look at this particular position everything is pretty much the same as far as development um, the pawn structures are both pristine uh, on each side okay space advantage is negligible yes uh, black has a little uh, more advantage and space on the uh, queen side okay it's not that big of a deal but pretty much the positions are almost uh, mirrors of each other. Okay, white is castle, black is not, but black is certainly uh, not going to be uh, stopped from castling. All right, they both have access to the same open files in the uh, C uh, and D files. Okay, of course, material is even. Nobody is uh, uh, gambited upon. There's no direct threats in the position, etc. So when you have positions like this, where it seems like it's rapidly heading for a draw due to the symmetrical nature. Nature. Remember that if you can gain an initiative, okay, and stay one step ahead of your opponent, this can often lead to an advantage in the position. And this is exactly what these uh, players are playing uh, for in this position. So with that in mind, let's continue. The game uh, continued on move 10. Avanchuk played rook d1. Notice already pursuing the initiative okay placing the rook on the d file and already uh threatening a discovered attack on the queen the queen goes to c7 a4 okay causing more trouble in paradise already threatening to take on b5 you see white is pursuing the initiative by attacking black and not allowing black to uh, complete his development in an easy manner okay knight bd2 of course is a normal move that is played in these positions also but i like avantuck's move because he's fighting for the initiative here black has to do something about this either he can capture here and then he has to deal with this constant pressure on the a pawn for example if he plays b takes a4 you notice how the bishop and the queen and rook all um, lined up on this pawn. Okay. And that would be like a long-term uh, issue for black. So, 
pawn. Amariov chooses to advance the pawn. Okay. And the problem is, is by advancing the pawn, he's giving black, excuse me, giving white a little bit more time. All right. Back to bishop takes a4. Again, rook takes knight b4. Check. This was actually played in uh, Botvinnik in uh, Floor. Back in 1933. But you can see the problems that black faces uh, in the position here. Queen b5 is another option. Queen b7, bishop c3, castle was played. But again, the theme is the same, is that black has these long-term issues if he takes on a4 with this uh, a pawn and also having troubles down the c file where his queen is located. Notice how white's queen is protected and safe behind this e pawn where black's queen has some difficulties and finding a nice uh, retreat. Knight bd2. And notice also, I forgot to mention that with the advance of this pawn, new we, new um, squares have been uh, created for white. And it's good because this pawn, okay, was uh, keeping the white pieces off c4. So with that advance, uh, this pawn controls c3 here, but gives up the control of c4. Bishop b7, knight b3, and remember I was telling you earlier about gaining time against the uh, bishop here when I said, well, why is white helping black develop? Well, again, now this has to be addressed. Here, Ponomaryov elects to play the move knight a5 and give up the bishop here, all right? Uh, he can keep the bishop here with a bishop d6. But after say bishop d2 castle rook a c1, right? That um that is actually taking place in uh, the game Timonov Schlosser. He remains under pressure here. Okay, notice how White just maintains a constant initiative in the position. Of course, he doesn't want to play a move like f6. Just weakening his position even further. Another option instead of, uh, I'm sorry, after bishop d6 also is just it's e4 right away. But it'll probably work out the same way. So bishop d2, castle, and instead of rook ac1 here, e4 is possible with this threat of course. So again, the same theme is just having this initiative and keep constantly pushing uh, black uh, uh, black around. And that's what white is able to do here. So now knight a5 takes the bishop here. Queen takes. Now e4. Knight b3 from Panamaryov. Rook b1. Castles. Again, if he tries to um, take the bishop here from white, then he brings the rook to the c file with Tempe. That's no good. And of course, knight d2 uh, will be coming. The idea here is queen takes here, then just simply b3. And again, knight c4. White would just hold the big initiative threatening here. Queen is exposed. And then say for instance the queen tries to get off the uh, D file again. Worried about this rook. Then black has a powerful move. Excuse me. White has a powerful sequence in E5. Say for instance knight D5. And knight D6. So for example E5. Knight d5, knight d6 check. Or 
if you want to be fancy about it you could just play knight d6 right away the idea being knight d6 check that is the idea being if queen takes then you have this exposure of the uh queen after bishop b5 check this is why knight takes c1 is avoided and rightfully so castles bishop e3 again hitting the queen again the theme of this game is what initiative 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 and symmetrical positions when your positions are symmetrical that's pretty much the only chance you have to win in the position is getting the ball rolling first on your opponent so whether you're black or you're white so here Ponomario is fighting for the initiative too is except that uh van chuck is just one step ahead of, ahead of him and a lot of it has to do with the exposed um nature of his queen he's not he has not been able to find a home for it and this is allowed um black excuse me allowed a uh, white to uh, gain a lot of time in the position and gain some pluses in the position so now you can see for example white has more space in the center now all right he attacks the knight again the initiative knight goes back to a5 not a good spot for the knight the time that black loses moving this knight to a5 white gladly uses to move his rook to a better square rook a d8 bishop b6 Again, initiative, attacking the rook. And now finally, under constant threats of attack, Ponomaryov cracks under pressure here. All right. Better move would have been like rook c8 here. And after, say, queen e2, exchanging the rooks. Black is still worse. All right, but he's not lost here. After rook d6, notice the um, placement of these two rooks on this diagonal. So, with that, Avanchuk quickly finds the double threat. Notice knight on the rim is dim. So, now it's a double threat. Something has to be done or the knight will be lost. So, queen takes c5 is forced. Bishop takes c5 and simple tactic at the end. That's another thing I want to say is that all tactics, no matter how complicated they seem, they might be layered, right? There might be three or four layers to the tactic, but at the end, it's always a very basic and simple tactic uh, to, you know, uh, to finish off the combination. Here you have a basic skewer, right? If I showed you this position right here, of course, you would take the, uh, let's say this queen was off the board, and I said white to move, you know, um, well... Actually, the queen has to be there because you would just take this knight. But let's pretend that the queen was gone and the knight was gone. You would simply just play the move uh, bishop to c5 here, making this simple skewer. Okay? However, you add a few more layers, then sometimes it becomes uh, confusing. Of course, experienced player is going to find queen c5 easily. Um, right? It's a you know, big mistake of... Uh, Ponomaryov had made with Rook uh, D6 here. Um, you know, it's one one move threat threatening the uh, the bishop. Okay, but this is a two layer combination. He plays that it forces the exchange because the queen, of course, has to protect this knight. There's really no um, good way to uh, deal with this. So, like for example. A move like knight c6 would just um, be horrible because the queen would be, uh, excuse me, the rook would just be hanging. Okay, so there's no way to deal with it. Simple double attack, right? Basic tactics. And after queen takes c5, the game was um, pretty much over. Again, another principle, not thirsty to capture uh, immediately. Right, and uh, cashing on the material. Uh, Vancheck just keeps improving. He moves the knight to e5 with another attack. Rook goes back. He still doesn't take the the uh, rook on f8. Okay? Right, he's not thirsty to, to cash in. He's still pressuring the, the position. Because this knight is so bad here. Alright, knight b3. Rook c3 attacking the knight again. He still hasn't cashed in on the rook. Finally, rook f8. So, Ponomaryov decides to give up an entire piece. Bishop takes e4. 
of course there's no compensation here f3 bishop f5 rook d2 of course the rook is uh unprotected here so Ivanchuk just make sure that's uh straightened out rook b8 and bishop takes a6 ponomariov uh resigned all right so devastating game by uh van chuck nice miniature under 30 moves again look at this position this final position here where white is just totally um has totally obliterated black blew him off the board has a bishop pair two pass pawns uh on the side up three pawns in the game and up a piece right contrast this position to this symmetrical position we had earlier here Okay, how did that happen? Ask yourself, how did that happen? It happened because White was able to develop an initiative early in the game. Okay, so when you're in symmetrical positions, that's your lesson for today. When you're in symmetrical positions, unless you want to draw, <laughs> you must you must search for for the initiative. You must search and fight for the initiative. And the way Avantuk was able to do it today against this uh, Queen's Gambit accepted was attacking, okay, the uh, extended uh, Queen side of black, namely the B pawn, and also exploiting the positioning of the black queen on the open C and D files, and also exploiting the... Uh, hanging bishop on c5 and of course during the end the the bad knight on the rim right remember that old term right knight on the rim is dim right then boy did that knight on a5 lead to some uh troubles another lesson you could pick up from the game too is notice how a van chuck was not quick to cash in the exchange just play bishop takes uh you know rook when he had the chance but he kept attacking kept um improving his pieces until Panamariov was just forced to give up a knight, right? Just imagine that 2700 grandmaster just forced to give up give up a piece like that and um uh lose the game in such an uh ignominious manner. All right, so that is it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, again, please comment below. I like hearing the feedback, any suggestions as far as like going over games or openings or anything end games middle games what have you uh i'll do it and um please check my links below there will be um some uh information regarding uh this opening as far as dvds books below please donate and support uh my channel i appreciate it very much and i will see you guys on the next video